Good morning, folks. We've got some storm alerts, climate news, brown dwarf plays a trick on scientists, and we had a big earthquake strike a red alert zone. We begin with the sun over at spaceweathernews.com and find a calm last day on our star. Top features to watch are the dark incoming coronal hole on the south and, north of that, the dark plasma filaments. There are no sunspots and solar flaring is therefore flatlined, way down in A-class range. And meanwhile, the solar wind took some cues as what appeared to be a density shock followed by a rise in speed turned out to be brief and minimally intense at best. All is calm here in Earth's magnetic field. We will be expecting the solar wind to increase intensity towards the end of the weekend when the stream from that coronal hole arrives. Until then, the focus is IMF and earthquakes. A magnitude 6.8 struck Vanuatu after multiple blood echoes struck and a cyclone power storm lingered overhead. It was a definitive hit in the red zone for our earthquake model, which displays the alert maps to the Disaster Prediction app along with space weather alerts and my direct line to you in case news needs to reach you outside of these morning news show hours. Lots of folks beginning to take advantage of the available tools and make earthquake forecasts, and as you've been seeing, they're having success too. And something interesting about this event yesterday, the Vanuatu quake was deep, blot echo depths itself, and after Tonga realized the crustal disruption potential, it seemed to set off a string of blot echoes around the same depth from Indonesia up through to Japan and back around to Vanuatu later in the day. Eyes on the crust. Top stories begin with a brown dwarf sitting 20 light years from Earth and which is not a brown dwarf at all. It is only 13 Jupiter masses, which is indeed planetary category, not small star. But the emissions that confused the scientists in the first place are an excellent example of why planets and stars really are not all that different at all. Up next, oh boy, get ready for a barrage of comments on this one. So how dare someone claim that polar methane releases actually have a net cooling effect? Don't they know they risk losing their funding for not going along with the frauds? I mean, cause? Anyway, these are not rookies. USGS, GOMAR, Center for Arctic Gas Hydrate, the Royal Netherlands Institute. That's like LeBron telling you about being really tall and good at basketball. You may want to consider the experience level there. Bottom line, the methane has always been releasing, always will be releasing. Ancient releases dwarfed what's happening now and didn't cause super warming, and the process actually sequesters CO2 from the surrounding environment and likely cools it. Top weather stories begin in India where 15 are dead from freak thunderstorms, half of those confirmed to be lightning strike fatalities. In the United States today we've got low pressure converging air masses in the central corridor and driving strong storms later today. Eyes on that for sure. And folks, our top weather worry comes to New Zealand where nobody has forgotten the atrocious flooding that happened just a few weeks ago. I'm going to go way beyond just the next 24 hours here. What can I say, Kiwis? It will be Friday night, and that storm still will not have left the North Island. Best of luck. We'll have the rest of the world's weather here, followed by shots of our star to close. Be sure to come see us at our upcoming public events. We've got a deeper look episode planned for website members of suspiciousobservers.org today. And also, don't forget, registration for Observing the Frontier 2018 opens in just five days. For those hoping to get those scarce tickets and the special venue room rate, probably need to get in the first few days. It's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.